thank you for coming here. So, uh, which is a huge part of. You guys are gonna make me cry already. <laughs> but thank you for um, coming here. This is a huge night for me. Um, yeah, honestly, without further ado, I present Thomas Hankinson and Leslie Hogan singing Jardin Jams. Great song. <laughs>
fun fact, I was woken up almost right exactly at 8 this Monday by a leaf blower not too far from my apartment, so this is a very, very true song for me. Um, next up, I don't, can you guys hear me while I'm still setting up? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so next up, I have a song that um, my classmates and I, or, I mean, my classmates and I wrote a uh, musical last quarter in Leslie's theater class, and uh, I was assigned the a uh, very anxious history major who has a tendency to kind of get absorbed a little too much in his uh, studies. He has to study for his Geography 20 uh, course disasters midterm, and also he's a little behind on his uh, Greek myths midterm as well. Yeah, so for now, I'll just pretend I'm an anxious 18-year-old history major. <laughs> You know, this character is not based off of me. Uh, any similarities are coincidental. <laughs> but I should probably put my face down. <laughs> studying these catastrophes. Every one of these is all too familiar to me. I've got a midterm in history. The test is tomorrow, got a bigger seal or borrow a little energy. These catas catastrophes got a feeler to keep us from our destiny. <sighs> like my midterm in history. I've got a midterm in history. I'll be doomed to repeat it. <laughs> Especially me and my history degree. See my four degrees spot here for you. Here for you to see spot. Is my future worth it? Only time will tell. He, he gets smugger heaven, we get longer hell. Why must I keep going? <laughs> your triangle shirt waist on. We make longer money, down to hell we fall, and just for cards in the wheel, turn tiny feet for all. If we fail to study history, we're doomed to repeat it. Especially me, I'll be doomed to repeat it. Especially me and my history degree. Caesar for degrees, God, here for you to see.
this next piece, the final life part of my uh, recital, and the first part of the second part of the like, serious stuff of my recital is Precipice. Um, when I made it, it had been, I don't know, I think like three years since I'd last written a song on the piano, because, I don't know, I just fell out of love with it. <laughs> but uh, one day, I just sat at the piano, tried to see if anything would come out, and uh, Precipice was born. I was really happy to have made it, because, man, it was like a reawakening. So, um, without further ado, I present Leslie Hogan to perform Precipice.
portions of my uh, recital. This next piece is a multi-movement piece I made during the pandemic called uh, Four Seasons Times Two, not affiliated with the luxury hotel chain. Um, so I just woke up, uh, challenged myself, like I need to, I just wanna write something. Why do I just try to make two different kinds of like interpretations for the seasons? So that was the start for this piece. Um, sometime this academic year, we had a seminar uh, with the Corwin Chair of Composition here at the US, uh, UCSB School. <laughs> um, Joao Pedro Oliveira, he uh, mentioned that um, visuals were a very important part of his piece at times, um, almost as important as, um, as the music. And I had an epiphany like, at my seat, I was like, oh my god, I didn't realize. I actually have the same process in my head, like visuals. The visuals in my head are like just as important to me as the music that goes on the sheet and eventually on like into the world. So I decided I, I would try to create a video by, uh, or edited by yours truly that tries to get, like I guess, the images in my head out onto a screen. I had a lot of fun making it, so. Hope you enjoy I three four. See if I can put this down. Okay. I'm short. <laughs>
they're really good stretches, you know? Adaptive music. What's adaptive music? Um, I find the easiest way to explain it is just comparing it between traditional music and adaptive music. So um, traditional music is usually pretty linear. You can think of all the songs that just played. Uh, you can think about songs on the radio. Yeah, just most songs. Um, adaptive music or dynamic interactive music is music that relies heavily on res uh, receiving cues and responding to events. It's usually, I mean, they say it's mostly only within the video game context, which is kind of misleading. There's a lot of great uh, pieces out there that use kind of the same adaptive uh, mechanic, but they don't get as much recognition. Um, yeah, so it, if it receives an event, sometimes the music might get quieter, the music will get faster, the melody might change. Uh, that's kind of the spirit of adaptive music. Um, there's two types of adaptive music. Usually you find them uh, interlinked. The first kind is vertical, which is a bunch of like instruments stacked on top of each other. Um, you can think of basically any game with fighting music. It's probably going to be vertically applied. And then there's also um, horizontal music, which is music that's divided into sections and it'll kind of stay within its own section until it's told, hey, move to the next section. Um, a visual difference I was able to come up with was like, um, so for vertical music, if I'm down here, maybe there's only like one instrument playing going like this, but as soon as I stand up, maybe there's a lot more action going on. That's kind of vertical music. Uh, for horizontal music, it's like if I told someone, hey, when I'm on this side of the room, just do this, and as soon as I cross over, do this. So, um, if I were to, I guess, demonstrate it, it'd be like, okay, I'm in the first section, and I crossed over, okay. Uh, I'm gonna go back now, so you gotta slow down and just do the first section kind of music. Um, for horizontal music, you can think about, uh, entering the final lap of Mario Kart where, think, where the music gets really fast and uh, kind of goes up the key to make things seem hectic. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the gist of video game music. And now uh, I'm gonna demonstrate a game. I guess I'll just stand here while I talk about it. Uh, my friends and I have worked pretty hard the past few months or so making a, a game called Clay or the plot is mostly revolving around this person who got cursed, woke up as a keyhole, but couldn't find the key, and was just like, well, I'm stuck here, since I can't do anything now that I'm a keyhole, I might as well explore the world, and uh, one day he was out in the forest, and he's like, hold on, that key shape looks familiar, oh man, I think that person has the key I need to finally, you know, free myself from this form except the uh, villains kind of like classic villain thing where it's like, I don't want it. I don't want to give it to you because it's all mine. Uh, we, what I'm presenting to you for the game is an alpha build. So there's still a lot of uh, construction and bugs, but I think it's kind of cool. <laughs> I'm happy about it. Uh, I was going to talk over, like I was going to talk over it, but then I realized, uh, I probably won't be heard over these speakers, <laughs> so I opted to put uh, ah, I opted to put like text on the screen. On the bottom left, there will be a uh, there will be text saying which uh, song and which part of the song is playing. So, without further ado, here is the rest of the uh, recital. <laughs>
is just a lot for me. Um, I think I already said thank you for being here, but I'm going to say it again. Thank you for coming. It means a lot to me. And uh, there's going to be a light. There's going to be a light reception uh, in like five minutes or so, so stick around. <laughs>